when I was 11 years old, which is, I don't know if that's considered early. It's a little bit early, I think. Um, so I got my period and then one time, and then I didn't get another period for like a couple months, which is normal when you're first starting out in puberty. Um, and then my acne was really, really bad. Um, I had horrible, um, big zits on my forehead, and then I'd get like a lot of pimples around my mouth area as well, and my chin. And so I had to be on a ton of different things. Like I've seriously, I've been on every single acne thing ever, except for Accutane. I haven't been on that. But anyway, so I had to deal with that. Um, I think my first acne treatment was doxycycline, the antibiotic. And then I used, um, I think, different, different gel. And um, so I had to deal with that, lots of acne, really oily skin. And then around 13, 14, I started getting um, uh, excess hair on my upper lip and I think a little down here as well. Um, my mom was the first one to notice it. I didn't notice it for whatever reason. And she thought it was really weird that I was getting this excess hair because usually um, it happens to like older women, women that are in menopause, they start getting excess hair on their face. So it was just weird that it was happening at um, the seventh and eighth grade. So then I started getting um, waxed regularly. And that was embarrassing. I hated the fact that I was having excess hair. And I didn't know why. We didn't know why. So fast forward to about 2021, 20, um, my acne was just horrible, horrible, horrible oiliness. And, um, more upper lip hair and um, neck hair it was just horrible so i went to the doctor and we discussed what could possibly possibly be the problem and he said um something about pcos and that people with pcos go on something a uh, medication called spironolactone so, and that, that was supposed to help uh, my acne and the oily skin, as well as the excess hair, because it's an androgen blocker. So I went on that. Um, I was on 50 milligrams a day, and I didn't have any side effects at all. Maybe a little bit of weakness in the gym, because I do love to lift weights, and I think that um, I was a little bit weaker than I had been before. So I was on that for, uh, I don't know, three, three, four years. And during that time, the oily, the oiliness of my skin went down considerably, but the acne didn't go away. Like I still had a lot of acne and I still had um, upper lip hair as well. So I decided that it's not worth, not worth taking because it's not helping. Uh, so I stopped taking it. And then I went in for an official PCOS diagnosis because my symptoms were just bad. The acne, the hair, it's just bad. So they gave me, I went to, the, to a gynecologist and they had me um, go in for tests, like blood tests. Um, what was it? Testosterone levels, estrogen, all that, as well as an ultrasound test to see if they were, they were um, cysts. And there were cysts. And um, one of my hormone levels was really high for some reason when they tested it. Um, it was, uh, what is it called? Some kind of progesterone level. One of the progesterone levels. It was really high, um, and that was um, 
associated with something called congenital adrenal hyperplasia. So I had to go to the endocrinologist to get tested again because um, that's something you really want to treat and it's treated with corticosteroids. The thing, and it really bothered me because that means that my fertility is, I think it's even lower than somebody with PCOS. And it was also weird because it's really, really rare in African Americans. It's really rare to have congenital adrenal hyperplasia. So I got it tested again and the level was fine. So then I just ended up with a PCOS diagnosis. Um, I did get pregnant. Well, I shouldn't jump ahead that far. So um, I ended up getting pregnant at, uh, how old was I? I was 26, of course. 26, and um, I was not doing anything to treat my PCOS at that time. Well, I'm, I was on, I was on some vitamins. I'll have to think back for our next video what those vitamins were. But anyway, so I got pregnant and I was, I was really happy because, um, you know, a lot of women with PCOS have trouble getting pregnant and this was just, I just thought I would never get pregnant. And I did, it was an accident and a surprise and I was really happy about it. So my pregnancy was good. It was good. Um, all of my, I had no excess hair. I, I grew no hair and that was awesome. I didn't have to shave my legs. I didn't have to get waxed. It, it was great. And then after I had my son, my hormones just went crazy and the excess hair decided to show up again and say surprise because I had so much excess hair it was like the worst that I have had to deal with and so I figured that my PCOS was um, coming back to really bite me and that sucked and oh and acne really bad like cheek breakouts. So I had to deal with that for about a year and a half and then I feel like my hormones must have um, got back under control because the, the, I don't get as much acne anymore. Um, but the thing is is that like now I have so much like upper lip and jawline hair and it's so annoying just so annoying because i have to shave it off in the morning and then by like 6 p.m it's back <sighs> then i have to shave it off again it's you know sometimes i think about going back on spironolactone just to see if maybe it would help but um i don't really want to so you know, I have to figure out how to treat my PCOS because right now I'm doing nothing. Well, I'm doing intermittent fasting, but I don't know if that will, is, or is treating it because people with PCOS are at risk for things like diabetes and high blood pressure, whatever. And most people with PCOS also are on like a low glycemic index diet or like low carb or keto and I'm not on any of those and keto I really do not want to be on keto I really do not want to be on keto at all and it's gonna suck if that is the only way to treat it and ward off these things so um, yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna do I'll have to figure it out maybe one of you women out there can help me because my insulin levels and my thyroid are completely fine, but I'm reading on PCOS forums that that doesn't mean anything. They could still be out of whack and 
maybe the tests the tests aren't always sensitive enough to um, show that. So I don't know. I don't know. I gotta figure out something because I do not want diabetes. I do not want a heart attack. You know. So yeah, that's what's happening with my PCOS. Oh, and I do have I do have regular periods. I've always had regular periods. Um, well, since you know, eleven and a half, I've always had regular periods. Twenty eight day cycle. Never been late. Um, 